The goal was to resolve the so-called Indian problem. So in 1883, the Canadian government officially instituted the residential school system. By the 1930s, nearly 75% of Indigenous children between the ages of 7 and 15 were forced to attend these schools. Unable to return home for months or even years, Indigenous children were often neglected and abused, stripped of their language and culture. Thousands of children died while at residential school. Others went missing, never to be seen again. At least 150,000 First Nations, Métis, and Inuit children were institutionalized over the course of more than 100 years. There are approximately 80,000 living survivors. Some have become leaders in their communities, teachers, counselors, commissioners. For many, the trauma of the mental, physical, and sexual abuse they suffered hasn't faded. The children and grandchildren of survivors have inherited those wounds. They have persisted, manifesting as depression, anxiety, family violence, suicidal thoughts, substance use. This is called intergenerational trauma, and it can take generations to heal. For Indigenous peoples, that healing can involve a return to the culture that was taken from them. For others, it involves formal acknowledgement of their experiences. There is no place in Canada for the attitudes that inspired the Indian residential school system to ever prevail again. For Canada, it means confronting the past and working towards reconciliation. Laws and apologies are necessary to help us move forward, but reconciliation also requires true understanding and empathy to create space where healing is possible.